the country's debt is going down. Revenue goes up, and much of that thanks to VAT. What does that mean for the country? Also, coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the State Minister for Finance talks about the state of affairs for the country and how a conference coming up could give an economic boost. Also, one major failure fixed and another pops up. WSC works to get water restored to New Providence, the impact felt all around the island. And the country's top basketball players start the trek to a Hugh Campbell championship. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The economic forecast for the country is good as measures are taken to ensure that the economy remains on a strong footing. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And given a boost to the economy are new tax reforms, which are already seeing positive results. Our Clint Watson talked exclusively with the Minister of State for Finance about the state of the economy ahead of the mid-year budget. State Minister for Finance, the Honorable Michael Alkidas, is optimistic about the country's finances. He says the Bahamas is in a better economic position as the multi-million dollar national debt he noted is also going down. The rate of the growth of the, of the debt has begun to slow. Eventually it will stop growing and eventually it will, um, it will start to go down. It's not a single um, year process, it's a multi-year process and we're disciplined and we're focused on it. And I'll be able to you know, elaborate more on this. Of course, we're coming up to the mid-year budget and we're going into the, into the, um, the budget, the main budget. And we, be, we will be able to demonstrate the positive effects that it has had in terms of boosting the revenue, eliminating the need for us to borrow as much money. We have not reached to the point yet where we absolutely do not have to borrow. But we think, um, you know, if we're disciplined, that can be somewhere very near into the future. Government credits this economic success to an increase in revenue. And that, by and large, is a result of the implementation of value-added tax. According to the Central Bank's Economic and Financial Development Report for December 2015, government earned $271.4 million from value-added tax. The revenue from VAT goes into the Consolidated Fund. However, it was initially announced that the revenue from VAT will be used to cut government debt. State Minister Halkidis explained how that can still be achieved. The formulation is that it goes in a Consolidated Fund. If you have more revenue, then you can meet your expenses and then you don't have to borrow. Um, this is, um, we have uh, in place a um, medium-term strategy, which is a multi-year plan. Uh, that we have begun to see our deficits reduce, the amount of money that we have to borrow um, decrease, and eventually we want to see that go to zero, but it's a process. We think, um, you know, if we're disciplined, that can be somewhere very near into the future, where we actually begin to, to, to pay down. As it is now, we're slowing the growth, and eventually we want to stop it and, and pay down. The initial phase of national health insurance, which includes primary care, will be free to Bahamians. Government has said it will cover the cost. It's a matter State Minister Alkidis is confident can be absorbed. Anything that we do, we have to be sure through consultation with the stakeholders that our economy can support it. And um, we have spoken about you know, a multi-year rollout of um, NHI. And we, we are committed to ensuring that you know, whatever we do, whatever we provide to the people, that we have to be able to sustain it so we cannot um, do something, then, then your economy forces you to pull back. Um, so the, the short is that whatever we roll out, we have to look at all of the circumstances, including our, our ability to pay, and that will dictate you know, the pace at which it's rolled out. So I'm, I'm confident we can do it. Low global economic predictions are being felt right here at home, with projections of 1.5% to 2% growth. Financial experts say this simply means the country must manage its spending and maximize its earnings. The state minister of finance hopes that international credit rating agencies won't further downgrade the economy as the opening date for the multi-million dollar Bahama project still looms. We're always concerned, but you know I think that what we have to do is look at the bottom line. Um, your rating is based on your finances. And uh, my position is that if our finances are um, solidified and um, we have them in a better position, that should be the bottom line. Um, we'll demonstrate that we don't think it's warranted 
Um, but some of those things are out, of, out of your control. Now, Prime Minister Christie has confirmed to ZNS News that Cabinet will meet to determine when the mid-year budget communication will be presented in Parliament. He expects it will be soon. At the Cabinet Office, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Thanks so much, Clint. A number of major conferences are set to be held in the capital, giving the economy a major boost. Janine Will Ferguson talks to the organizers of a big event set to be held in a few weeks. During a traditionally slow period for tourism, a major conference is expected to give the country a much-needed push. Chief Operations Officer of the Local Organizing Committee of the Inner American Development Bank, Lyndon Maycock, is optimistic that this major international event will produce direct and spin-off opportunities in tourism, culture, and other related sectors of the economy, with the 5,000 delegates set to travel here. From the Island House, out like the key, staying at the Malia, the Breezes, uh, Sunset Resort, Atlantis, uh, Sandals, and you'll find even private individuals will be renting their homes uh, to, to accommodate the amount of delegates that will be attending the conference here in the Bahamas. The meetings are slated to be held April 7th through 10th at the Bahama Convention Center. Maycock further revealed that delegates to the conference will also be exploring some of our family islands and a special cultural village at the venue. The cultural village that we are uh, erecting, uh, we'll have artisans and, and vendors that will have a, a major impact on our local persons who will be involved in selling their, uh, their artwork, their craft work, uh, food vendors. We intend to create an atmosphere, a cultural village that will benefit uh, the entire uh, persons who are involved in, the, in, in those industries. There will be delegates who will also be going to the family of islands. Uh, we talk about the Exumas, persons have already booked to swim with the pigs. The pigs yes. Yeah, and so you, it's going to be a tremendous economic boost to the Bahamas. Meantime, State Minister for Finance Michael Halkita says the country expects to make a return on the millions it's investing to host the conferences. We're going to have, like I said, 5,000 um, between delegates and their family members and people from the private sector coming to visit. So that would provide an immediate economic impact and a lot of the investment that we are making in terms of technology, in terms of furnishings, etc. We will be able to redeploy within the government system. So we're not strictly, um, the money that we're spending is not exclusively for this conference. We, we will have some benefit, particularly in the area of technology. The Bahamas will also benefit from international media from countries in the Caribbean, Europe, South America, Africa, and Asia. Chinea Nawal Ferguson, ZNES Network News. Officials at the Water and Sewage Corporation says that water has been fully restored to customers following major problems last night on the 21-inch water main in Ridgeland Park. This affected residents in central, southern, and eastern New Providence who had low pressure or no water at all. The public is also advised that crews have been working to replace that main for a few weeks and they should be completed next week. This replacement is expected to improve the reliability of water supply. The corporation apologizes for the inconvenience. Bahamas Air has signed a new five-year industrial agreement with the National Pilots Association. A statement issued by Bahamas Air says the agreement ends almost two years of negotiations, which at times experienced unnecessary delays and unfortunate events. However, both management and the Pilots Association are satisfied. The contract period is January 1, 2013 through December 31, 2017. Bahamas Air has been able to conclude three industrial agreements and looks forward to signing its fourth agreement with the airport airline and allied workers union later this week. The College of the Bahamas and the Union of Tertiary Educators of the Bahamas signed an industrial agreement yesterday. The old one expired three years ago, with the new agreement in effect until 2017. The Union College Council and COB executives were pleased that negotiations took place without industrial action. UTEB President Mark Hune said while the agreement does not include all that they wanted, they were able to keep their benefits under the new plan. Looking at spouses, but also life partners. We, will, we were also able to negotiate an increase in the retirement age from 65 to 70 upon the college becoming a university. We increased funding for professional development from $100,000 to $225,000, which is an increase of $115,000. 
Our team was able to negotiate a new salary emoluments package, which included, which includes a $3,500 lump sum at signing, automatic increment increases ranging from $100 to $225, effective July 2016, an increase, a $1,600 increase in salaries, effective July 2016, and an increase in medical insurance coverage from 60-40 to 80-20 coverage. Council Chairman Alfred Sayers QC said when the University of the Bahamas bill is passed and comes into effect, all agreements will remain current. He also added that college officials are ensuring that human resources is strengthened. In the area of advisory services, the government spends over $20 million every year on consultants. We have a distinguished faculty here at the College of the Bahamas, soon to be the University of the Bahamas, who can basically step into that gap and save our country some foreign exchange that is leaving currently could be utilized because the intellect, the expertise is right here in this academy.